That's a good step right there. You should absolutely mark up your materials. Thanks for watching. See you next week. What's up, guys? This is Robert. Um, this is a business of carpentry uh, episode. So our friends, the handyman and Alan Lee, uh, honestly, handyman, um, seem to be like in this little like one upmanship kind of thing right now, which that's kind of cool. Um, whatever. So I'm just going to jump on the bandwagon actually and hope that when you watch this video, um, you just subscribe to my channel too and I can get some, um, coattail riding subscribers there. Um, handyman, hope you watch this. How you doing, man? Um, it's been a while since we actually talked like several years. Um, I was actually, uh, had a bigger channel than you at, for at one point in time. And then you just like knocked this YouTube thing out of the water and took it big. So congratulations, man. I didn't mean to say that. Like seriously, congratulations. That's a lot of work. Alan, how are you doing? Um, I, I know Alan. Um, we talk uh, quite a bit actually. I'm on uh, his Handyman Journey uh, Facebook group. Um, there's a lot of great information there. A lot of great skilled carpenters. Um, so I encourage you to check out that group as well. So this issue of markup. Um, there are some pretty powerful feelings about it. Um, I'm on the side of you should mark up your materials. But um, honestly, um, honestly, ha, get it? But Alan, um, I actually disagree with the way you do it. And Mr. Handyman, I think I disagree with how you're doing it. Um, I would say I kind of, I honestly kind of agree with you a little bit more. But here's the thing, guys, is the whole reason you mark things up is to add profit to your jobs okay you have to have profit so to go back to hmm what's something easy that we can all that most of us do that are tradesmen um install a door so let's just take that and look a whiteboard so we have a whiteboard here let's go you want to install windows? No, because I don't do windows. Um, but you know what? Let's do that. Let's do a window right here. Okay. So we're going to... No, no. That's, that's, that's being too copycat, right? I'm copycatting too much. Let's install a door. Because, you know, still a hole in the side of your house that you don't want cold or warm air coming through. So we're going to install a door. Exterior door. And we're just going to do the cheap, a cheap steel uh, solid door. Um, in my area, that's about 125 okay? Um, we're going to have some spray foam. What does spray foam cost? Like seven, about $5 a can. We've got some brick mold, whatever. Um, so brick mold, say that's going to be about 20 bucks. So we're at $150, boom. And now we have to, so this is our material cost, boom. Materials. So 150 in materials, and now we have labor. How long does it take to install an exterior door? Um, mm, about four hours, right? If all you're doing is installing the door, and if you're going to paint it and do all this other stuff, a lot. But from, I would say, picking up the door at Home Depot, getting to the customer's house, uninstalling the old one, Putting the new one in at minimum like half a day, right? So now you gotta figure out your hourly. Here's the thing. So whenever you get to this, you have to determine what is your cost of doing business. I'm not talking about what you charge the customer per hour. I'm talking about your cost of doing business. So in order for me to pay myself my monthly salary, cover my insurance, my average cost of gas, um, my work vehicle that I've got to pay for, maintenance, et cetera, et cetera. As my actual cost of doing business comes out to be about $43 an hour. So I'm going to say it's going to take me half a day at $43 an hour. Um, now remember, this is my cost of doing business. This is what I have to make if I'm going to leave the house to stay in business. What's that? Uh, 80, 160 plus 12. So $170, 170, boom is labor, that's my cost, okay? Boom, what's this math? It's late, I'm tired, that's 12, right, eh, three. 
So 320, that's my cost. That is our cost of installing this door without any markup at all. Okay, I, we haven't marked up anything. So my answer is actually no, don't just mark up ma your materials, but you need to be marking up your labor as well. And this is what's called profit. This gives you money to reinvest in your business, to advertise. I know, uh, Handyman, you say you don't advertise at all. That's cool. I've got um, a very good friend in the trades that doesn't advertise at all. Um, I'm of the philosophy of I'm going to have my name out there as much as possible, and I'm going to pre-screen, 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 so I can get the jobs I want and effectively charge, name my price, and have so much work coming in that I don't have to worry about what the market value of the job is. I charge whatever I want because basically I'm getting paid for it. Now, obviously, there is a limit of what's reasonable, fair, ethical, all that kind of good stuff. So don't misunderstand there. All right, so our cost of doing the job is $320. Now we got to mark this job up, right? We're going to mark it up. So some people say, well, I'm going to add, you see, you know, I'm going to do 30% on materials and then I'm going to do, you know, 10% on my labor. Well, no. Um, let's back up for a second. So the average wage in the United States is 40 something thousand dollars a year based on working 32 billable hours a week. And if you are in your own business, yes, you probably work 60, 70. I'm talking about billable hours. 32, that comes out to about $25 an hour. You can check my math, you can disagree with the math, whatever, but I did it and it came out to about $25 an hour. You've got, and that's what the average person in America makes per hour to work, okay? So if you wanna be middle class, then that's what you need to pay your wife an hour for you doing your work, right? That's what you need to pay your family, $25 an hour. Well, you've also got self-employment taxes, insurance, you don't get health care coverage thrown into your own business. So you've got to have all that in. So honestly, if your minimum price of doing business isn't about 50, isn't about double that, about $55 an hour, then you're effectively living in poverty. And I've done all the math and based on my overhead of keeping that low on purpose, my cost of doing business is about $43 an hour. Okay? So that's how we got our 320. Now it's time for profit. And this is where some of you are going to disagree with me. I mark up. 100% above cost. That's my goal. Now, it doesn't always fly that way because the, the way that just prices work, but my minimum is I am going to mark up 50% above my cost. So what's half of 320 is, <laughs> I can't do math, it's late. Okay, 320 divided by two, three goes into there, one, Two, that comes down, six, so 160. So if I multiply at minimum that, I'm going to add 160 to 320. And typically I have a nice little spreadsheet that does this for me, right? Is, boom, boom, 480, 480, boom. So that's about, that's what I would charge to so just come install an exterior steel door, take me half a day. Um, that in material costs, and that is my minimum charge. My goal is to make double that, is to double this. So that would be six, well, ha, I wrote three again, I'm dyslexic, cut me some slack, would be $640 to install that exterior door. That's, an, you make, uh, Handyman makes a very good import, point about you have to know your market. Um, so I know in my market, that that's a little on the high side and it would kind of depend on where I think I could win this job at and where, how desperate I am for work, how far it is from my house. And you know, if it's right next door or if it's like right over from Home Depot, did that, it's like two minutes from Home Depot and I don't need to mark it up as much. But this is my profit. So I'm either making $160 of profit or I'm making $320 of profit. And maybe I'm gonna multiply that, end up multiply that by 1.7. And I'm not even gonna to try to do that math right now. But you have to have profit if you're gonna have a successful business, guys. One of these days, our bodies are gonna be old, our bodies are gonna be broken from doing the physical labor we do. I would personally like to retire. 
And I want to leave my wife and my kids with a big enough nest egg where they don't have to worry about money. And this is why, honestly, if you aren't putting back 10% of your gross revenue into savings into some type of retirement plan, you will never be able to retire. And that right there is a reason enough to mark up your materials at least double, because that gives you a 50% gross margin over your cost of doing business, okay? That's how I do it. I think you should mark it up. Now, if you have your markup built, so $43 an hour times two would be $86 an hour. So if I'm billing out at $80 an hour, and then don't worry about marking up materials because customers already bought them or something, you know what, that's up to you. But you have to account for profit. Without profit, your business does. And that's how I would mark up this job. They want me to pick out the door. I can show them the door. Boom, $640. If the customer's like, I want it broken down, I'd be like, all right, the door is $150 of that total cost. And so, uh, math is hard. 14, nine, five. So I'm charging you $490 to install that door, right? or whatever the math works out here. But yes, you have to have profit. Um, handyman, honestly, y'all should do like a debate video. I really think that'd be cool to watch. Um, this is Robert Daly, Daily Woodworks, Business Carpentry, Texas Custom Kennels. I run too many businesses. Um, and from all three, I'll tell you that if you're not marking up, if you're not adding a profit margin to your work, you are sentencing your family to poverty. Later.